The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency has made a lot of changes recently around how it manages data. It's created a data core, launched an open data platform, and fostered some close partnerships with the private sector. Here, a closer look at the cyber implications for those changes and strategies to maximize the benefits. Here now, Matt Connor, Chief Information Security Officer at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and Gary Newgard, Vice President of Public Sector at Pure Storage. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Uh, Matt, I want to start with you. Tell me about your priorities right now at NGA. Thanks, Francis. It's a privilege to be here. Um, it's an exciting time for NGA. We just released our 2025 strategy, which focuses our attention on our, a handful of priorities, uh, among them automation, augmentation, artificial intelligence. Uh, growing our workforce and uh, building a data core and dev core, uh, brokering content from suppliers, uh, global, domestic, and, and partners. Um, just a, a really exciting time for NGA. That's an interesting position for an organization in the intelligence community to be in, to be a broker of information. Tell me about how that posture, the reception and distribution of information affects the way that you think about your cybersecurity posture. Uh, in every way, uh, really. I mean, we're, we're talking about guaranteeing trust for our key product. Uh, you know, as the national system for GeoInt and the and functional manager for that uh, system, and uh, for the allied system of GeoInt, uh, people look to NGA for, for trust. They look for authoritative uh, reference to, to the products that they need based on their mission, based on their circumstance. And, and many people are unaware that NGA has a huge uh, intersection with public, uh, federal, national, uh, sorry, excuse me, non-governmental organizations, mm -hmm. academia, and industry, uh, in addition to our, of course, our key roles as a warfighter support and combat support agency. Yes, Gary, or as Matt was talking about his, uh, how cybersecurity links to their mission, Gary, you were kind of nodding your head in agreement. What did you hear there that's common with the um, experiences that you have with other organizations in government? So across, across the federal government and across public sector, it's always about the mission. Mm -hmm. So you have to protect the data uh, and ensure that it's not compromised as you're sharing the data to um, yield faster results. I mean, at the end of the day, speed is a currency, data is a currency, and being able to bring those together to truly make a difference in an outcome where time matters. Mm -hmm. And in the mission, time always matters. Mm -hmm. the, the Kind of the overarching framework for that over the last maybe year to two years has become NIST's risk management framework. It's the gold standard now, both in government and outside government. Gary, I'll start with you on this one. What do you see as maybe the the approach that an organization takes successfully to work within that framework and make it work for them? Well, I think, uh, you know, at Pure, our mission is to ensure that it's easy for, the, for our uh, customers to deploy. Uh, our products are designed from the, from the start to be compliant with the NIST standards, uh, FIPS 140-2. So as, as you have that out of the box, it's one less thing to worry about, whether it's the data at rest or global encryption. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that the data is, should be, we should get out of the silos and get into a hub, st hub strategy where the data is available 24 by 7, not in different silos, because it becomes very challenging to ha use the tool sets and the application software that we all are embracing, that are changing and evolving. So you may have a new application come in tomorrow, but if you try and get that data from you know five different silos, it becomes totally uh, ineffective. Mm -hmm. Matt, has the concept of a risk management framework been difficult to evangelize in an intelligence organization? Not as such. I think most uh, decision makers, most leaders recognize risk management as a key part of any operation. Uh, our challenge is, is to move the risk management framework from a, a process and paper approach to automated uh, automated decisions at the speed of mission, really. Mm -hmm. and, and as uh, Gary was talking a moment ago about speed, I mean, speed is, is uh, one of our paramount priorities, delivering that information to someone downrange, uh, uh, you know, ships at sea and, and planes in the air. Um, so what we're really pursuing right now, in hot pursuit really, of is our, our ATO in a day strategy. Mm -hmm. and that's an authorization to operate uh, within a day, and it's uh, from code create, commit, code creation, all the way to production. We've reached an ATO in three days, ATO in five days, and, and well, one day is within our site. 
Um, we do that by automating body of evidence creation, automating control allocation, control validation, and really trying to give customers our programs the TurboTax experience for cybersecurity. Gary, what are the most important tools that agencies can leverage to gain that speed, whether it's speed like Matt's talking about, speed as you alluded to a moment ago, whether it's anything, it doesn't matter. Where can agencies make up ground quickly to be able to leverage speed as, a, as an asset? Well, uh, as I said, typically people will take, you know, a uh, slice of data, a period of time, three, four, six months, whatever, and then they'll put it into cold storage, and, and then it takes forever to draw that data back. Mm -hmm. So you've lost the effectiveness of the tool set. You want to be able to analyze as much data as possible in the shortest period of time because most likely a breach, and I, I think you'll probably agree with this, <laughs> the breach may have occurred four months ago, three, six months ago, and if you don't have visibility back into that, you've lost the war. Mm -hmm. You've already been compromised, and you have no ability to remedy it. I want to go back to your 2025 strategy for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about some of the things that you're th that are kind of on your mind that will be in the forefront as you move forward toward that date. Automated intelligence and some of the other buzzwords that we hear. How do all of those fit in your view with cybersecurity posture of an organization like NGA mm -hmm. seven years from now? I, I mean, uh, that type of automation, that type of augmentation is um, is really the only way we'll succeed in a cybersecurity mission. I think cybersecurity at this point and going forward is essentially a data science challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, extracting data, extracting intelligence from all that raw telemetry. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that at scale with automated uh, automated means, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And and most of our uh, vendor community right now, I mean, they're, they're, that's certainly a component of most solutions that are offered us and certainly the things that we're building now uh, to capitalize on machine learning specifically when it comes to, you know, talking about uh, parsing that data and extracting actual relevant content. Gary, a lot of people have talked about the potential for things like automated intelligence, machine learning, and so on to accelerate the ability of agencies to be more secure. What are some specific applications that you expect to see? Fewer people have talked about the specifics of how that happens. Um, you know, the applications is, is being able to get to a point where the automation is occurring. Mm. And we're in just on the cusp okay, of, of, a, of really a, a title, not a title change because it's, it's going to be a, a rising of the sea mm -hmm. and being able to use machines to augment the human uh, element. And a machine can go through this data, learn as it goes through that data, and then get those results into to a human to make a choice. And the faster we can do that, the better off we're going to be. Uh, I just think that um, one of the things that we don't talk about very often with respect to auto, uh, artificial intelligence specifically, but at least this whole space is, is the increase in attack surface mm -hmm. that, that AI itself represents. Um, you know, like any new technology, and, and uh, generally you talked earlier about uh, you know, assets and liabilities, uh, I think we look at artificial intelligence um, in many ways like a panacea. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I think there's a tendency for us all to run towards the ball. Uh, I think that we need to be doing that very carefully, very considered. Uh, you know, we mentioned cyber labs and cyber ranges. I mean, I hope that as we all approach artificial intelligence at scale, we're deliberate, we're careful, we're evaluating the data against the hype uh, and, and finding the right applications for it because it's pretty easy to buy into uh, the marketing slicks. Matt, Gary, thanks both very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Entrepreneurial Government is brought to you by Pure Storage. Download the Merit Talk Federal AI Disruptive Study at purestorage.com.